Charterman, 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 Hey, what's up you guys? Shardimus Prime here, doing a Marvel Legends figure custom showcase video on three customs that I recently acquired. We have the Rose from TJ Customs, the big time classic Spider-Man from Pounds 978, and then we have the Doc Ock with the bendy tentacles from Dave Wheeler. Thank you guys, all three of you, very much for these custom figures. Uh, these two right here were commissioned, and then this one right here was just sent to me by TJ Customs that just arrived recently. So we're going to take a closer look at that one first, then the Doc Ock, and then lastly, the big time classic Spider-Man. Now before moving forward, I just got to give the disclaimer, as I always do with these custom showcase videos, is that I am very grateful to have these pieces, and that all the criticisms that you're going to hear from me are just me doing what I feel like I should do as an action figure reviewer and give objective criticism to these pieces. But overall, I am very, very happy with this figure. I mean, right when I opened it up, I knew who exactly what it was. It's the Rose, and I'm very happy to have this obscure character. If you don't know who Rose is, uh, he is the son, well, originally just a villain, and then later on, a vigilante or a anti-hero, uh, but it is Richard Fisk, son of Wilson Fisk, and at first he's a villain, and then once he discovers that his father is the Kingpin, uh, he tries to kill the Kingpin and then ends up getting killed by his mother, which is, oof. Man, that's awful. That's what you get for being a Fisk. But I really like what he did over here. I really like the front part of this mask, and I really like the design choice that he went with right here as well. I think it looks really good. I like the wrinkles around the glasses and everything. And we have these seams with the black paint inside there. I do love that he added black paint right there and all the cracks and everything, so that's really cool. And the paint on the head sculpt or on this mask head sculpt is a bit smoother than some other areas. I did notice an imperfection though as the lines come through on the back. They don't really uh, stay consistent all the way through. So when you see the back of it, it looks like he's turning his head to the right, uh, but he's not. He's just looking straight forward. So that's a little detail. And it is a little on the chalky side when we get to the flesh tone. He did use the young Nick Fury body mold. As I, you can see as I move the head upward, I got a little bit of paint chipping right over there. So yeah, you can see the, the flesh tone changes right there in the neck hinge. I really like that he went with this baby blue color right here for the tie. And you can see, you know, it's a black suit with white paint over it, which is pretty tricky to do. Uh, with my experience in customizing something like this, you need to really water down the paint so that you can get many thin coats on it. Uh, it looks like we've got a lot of thick coats, like, you know, when you go on the inside right here, you could see obvious paint brush strokes and stuff like that. So I think that could have been done with a little bit more finesse, but at the same time, you know, having that, uh, I'm going to say quote unquote black wash over the white because it's not really a black wash, but it kind of looks like it, you know, so I think it adds some character to it so there's a part of me that really likes it at the same time I love that he gave him the blue gloves so that's really cool and it did come with his own gun so I'm happy about that looks really good there's an alternate head and I think that's where this stain came from right here from the blonde hair and then you could see looking at the back of the figure and you know in the creases you're gonna get more of the black plastic coming through right there uh, he did get some of these joints which is pretty sweet I like that and you can see right inside here so that's pretty cool and then you get the peg hole at the bottom of the foot and then you can see uh, that ankle joint doesn't really quite have all the paint in there so yeah a little bit more of the thinner paint I like the attention to detail with the belt right here though you know that that was just kind of left as is so that's good and then yeah a little bit of the paint smearing on to the suit so we do have the interchangeable heads last time I received a custom from TJ customs he had a magnetic head swap thing going on and we don't have that this time but that's okay I believe this is a Madrox head sculpt right here that's been painted for the Richard Fisk and I think it looks really good I'm impressed by the hair sculpt I really like how it's wafting off to the side like that, so that looks pretty nice. You know, looks pretty good to me. A little bit too much black paint, though, mixed in there with the blonde. I think that throws things off. You know, a lot of time people have kind of like a dirty blonde hair color mixed in with the blonde. So, you know, that's just a gripe that I'm mentioning, but yeah, and a little bit chalky on the flesh tone. 
Yeah, a little bit more smoother, lighter, or thinner coats of paint, I think, would have helped with that. But still, looks pretty good. I obviously do prefer having this masked head sculpt on here, and I'm going to go ahead and plop that on and have him displayed next to the Wilson Fisk Build-A-Figure that we recently received. So I'm stoked about that. And again, thanks again, TJ Customs. I really appreciate it, man. Nobody asked you to send this my way. You just sent it over. Thank you, man. Link to his YouTube channel in the description below. And to measure out the height of this rose figure, you can see that it's standing just a little over six and a half inches tall. And then for a size comparison, we have Rose next to the Kingpin Build-A-Figure, and then we have the Young Nick Fury figure, and you can see, you know, going from a black suit to an all-white suit right over there, that could not have been easy to make. And then for a TJ Customs figure comparison, we have Rose right here next to the Chameleon figure that he sent me a while back. Oh man, alright, so out of the three figures, honestly, I've had the most fun with this Doc Ock. Doc Ock being my favorite Spider-Man villain, and having these tentacles right over here, oh jeez man, it has just been so much fun. I mean, he just stands so easily on all four legs right over here. That is just really cool to do. So let's get a closer look back here and see uh, what Dave did. So you can see that he did have to drill in here a little bit and we have these, I think these are from lamps right here. That's where most people have got them from. I've seen people paint them and stuff like that and they've used different kinds, but I really dig it quite a bit. It does have that look and it's, you know, made with actual metal over here. So one benefit for me was posing my Mafex Spider-Man around with this figure and having Spidey kind of grabbing onto these and stuff and running on it. So that was really fun to do. Uh, but yeah, man, very long tentacle over here. Here. A bit on the thin side though, comparing it to the Toy Biz uh, tentacle right here, which you can pop off and plug into the back of this figure. You know, I talked about that before, and many people have done that. That's fine. Uh, but these tentacles are much longer, and then comparing it to the diameter that we have right over here of the tentacles that actually came with it, uh, you could see that, yeah, this is much thinner. But not so thin to the point where it bothers me. You can see that Dave did point the claws right over here. Uh, having some kind of articulated claws would be really cool. I really wish Hasbro gave that to us but you can rotate this around and move it around too so that's pretty cool I like that and he kept the paint up right there in the center so that's pretty sweet but looking at the sheer length of these things I mean holy crap man and then comparing it to one of the Doc Ock tentacles that came with the Toy Biz version I mean jeez we're getting so much room to play here this is so freaking awesome I mean I really took a ridiculous amount of pictures of this figure it, it was just so much fun and look how easy it is for me to just get him to stand right here I mean it's just a lot of fun. I don't know how else to explain it. I just absolutely love this thing. So yeah, I didn't really pose it around with the big time classic Spider-Man so much. I mean, I just got that Mafex Spider-Man, so of course I posed it around with that one along with the Pizza Spider-Man figure, but jeez, I don't know what else to say now except for some little gripes. Now, a little gripe I do have is I wish I can get a tighter uh, wrap right over here. You can see it's not going to stay in place. Like if I wanted to get it really choked around Spidey's neck, it tends to loosen up right over there. So that's a little gripe I have with it, but I'm still able to make it work in the photos. So it doesn't really bother me that much. And man, that, I guess like if you want to call the thickness of the tentacles being a little bit of a gripe, but not really. I don't think they're thin enough to really bother me at all by any means. It's just, God, this is just so freaking awesome. Uh, I'm just really, really happy right now. I had this on display in the garage and then it's like, okay, I didn't want to go nuts taking pictures until I was ready to do this type of review. And then, yeah, last night I went nuts taking pictures of this thing and man again I just had a blast thank you so much Dave and Dave's not just a customizer but he's also a comic book creator so check out his Mindwave comic books link in the description below and then I want to compare the Toy Biz Doc Ock standing on just three legs compared to the modified Hasbro Doc Ock standing on just three legs and getting this figure to stand took me just a fraction of the time it did for this one to get to stand so yeah that is really nifty I really like that a lot I didn't think that this Doc Ock could ever be beat but yep, now nah, it's happened. And then for a Dave Wheeler custom comparison, I wanted to compare Doc Ock next to the Shardimus Prime 1-6 scale custom and the 1-6 scale big, big time no letdown Spider-Man. And lastly, we have the Marvel Legends big time classic Spider-Man. And this figure could have come out so much better if I let Pounds 978 go crazy. But I did not. I had specifics over here uh, and he was kind of like, what the heck? Okay, you don't want to have interchangeable hands? Okay. So the reason for that is that I wanted to use him instead of the big time letdown Spider-Man so it's supposed to be the same exact character uh, but just in a different suit and there's a lot of character to this big time letdown Spider-Man just the way that articulation works having this whipping hand here all the time you know and the fisted hand on the right side it's just kind of a goofy character to 
animate around, and I need to keep that goofiness going with this piece. Now, he had actually used uh, the Scarlet Spider figure, which I didn't have a problem with at all. You know, I was like, just use, you know, whatever figure has that body mold, that's what I wanted. And as far as the design choice goes, I wanted him to base it off of the Pizza Spider-Man, which he did, and I'm very happy with this. This came out exactly the way I wanted it to, so I'm very pleased with that. Uh, while we are going back and forth, uh, some of the images kind of made the eyes look a little bit different than how I see them right here, having them in person, so I'm really happy with the way the eyes came out, so that looks really good. I'm really happy with the line work too, and the quality of the paint is astounding. I mean, I've already been using this figure uh, for a while now in stop motions, so it's been very much played with, and for a custom that's just been moved around so much, I mean, Pounds really goes into functionality. That, that's one thing that I really, really love about his customs, is that he makes sure everything works the way it's supposed to, or that you're not going to get a lot of rub, and you know, the, the guy's just a true collector and a true Spider-Man fan, so he knows you're going to want to pose your figure around and I thought the rate that uh, I was charged and his asking price out there publicly is a very good rate so I highly recommend him um, but I think he's on break right now but regardless link to his channel is in the description below uh, I did notice that you know the finger did get chipped off right over here but he said that the figure that he had used for this custom was already like that so it's not a big deal I didn't even notice that until a little while after but yeah man the line work right here is fantastic I like the Spidey logo right over here and then looking on the back, the Spidey logo on the back looks really good also. I mean, for him painting over a lot of black and red, this blue came out really clean. And it kind of has a little bit of a wash look to it, which I don't mind, as I had mentioned earlier. I, I like that kind of texturing look, and it's not really, you know, sticking out to me too much or anything. It's not distracting me from the design of the character or anything. So, yeah, looking at the hip joints right there, that looks really good. Now, we know the articulation on this figure, so, I mean, I'm not going to skip it or anything, but uh, one thing I will gripe about is that this is a bit loose. And that's only really frustrating while I'm animating the figure because sometimes I'll set him up and then the and it'll kind of swing away so that's one thing that bothers me but I mean man getting a close look at these articulation at the joints and everything on here I mean look at that the rub is just non-existent so I'm very pleased with that I hadn't had one piece chip off on me or anything and then, you know, the wrist swivel. And it's great to have a Spider-Man figure with blue on this side and then red on this side. And he even painted the line work right there on that pin. That's awesome. So I'm very happy to see that. Great piece. I'm, uh, I, I love this figure. It's just, I don't know, it's hilarious to me, but it's awesome at the same time. And having something that was in my head just come out and be, you know, something real and tangible in my hands right here is pretty amazing. So, yeah, great work, Pounds. And you can see... You know, the line work right here. I will gripe about the webbing kind of being a little bit more linear and more of a grid pattern right here around the torso than I'd like it to be, but, you know, again, these are nitpicks of nitpicks, man. I'm very pleased with this piece. This is awesome. Now to measure out this big time classic Spider-Man figure, you can see he's standing just a little under six and a half inches tall. And then here's a big time classic Spider-Man next to the Marvel Legends big time letdown Spider-Man. So what I have in mind going on right now is I'm in the works of trying to get a little stop motion series going on with the Marvel Legends big time letdown Spider-Man. And I want to call it the Marvel Legends letdowns. And I'm currently working on it in my head. I'm coming up with ideas. And it doesn't sound like I'm doing much, but the way it works, you know, I spend a lot more time thinking up things. And then once I get the ideas solidified the way I want it to go, then it goes really fast from there with the stop motion. So yeah, expecting new series on this channel called The Marvel Legends Letdowns should be coming hopefully sooner than later. And then here's the big time classic Spider-Man figure next to the Mafex comic version Spider-Man. Oh my god, I still love that figure so, so much. And then for a Pounds 978 custom comparison, we have the Marvel Legends big time classic Spider-Man next to the Marvel Legends big time no letdown Spider-Man. So I want to thank you guys for watching my video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this and I've got to give the Customizers a big thank you as well. I didn't mention price earlier with the Doc Ock, but Dave gave me a hell of a deal with that as well. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. I hate nitpicking these things because I just feel lucky to have them, so it's kind of weird. And I hate the idea of giving these sud ratings, but hey, I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, the Rose and the Big Time Classic Spider-Man figure get a sud rating of... I love it! And the Doc Ock mod gets a sud rating of... <laughs> Yes, I'm so awesome. 
just because I had such a freaking blast posing that Doc Ock around. I mean, I just spent so much time playing with the figure, and man, it was just so easy to get him standing with just two legs on the ground right here. Oh, I'm just so happy with that. He basically took a figure that I already really liked and just made it just ten times cooler, so I'm very happy right now. And the big time classic Spider-Man is exactly how I wanted it to come out, but uh, with my specifications, it just doesn't make it as great of a figure as it possibly could have, and that's totally my fault. So, nothing against Pounds 978 over there, and I'm very happy to have this new character in my collection, and I love the design choice of it and everything, so I gotta say thanks one last time, and you haven't hit that subscribe button already, please go ahead and do so right now, as well as hitting that notification bell, and I will catch you guys later. Peace! <laughs> Hey, new Shark Miss Prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't.